All right, Turbo Nation, we have an updated best settings video for season six. This is a question I most frequently get. Turbo, what are your settings? Every time I'm streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the real Turbo Man, link in the description, by the way. This is gonna be the video that I direct them to. All right, so we're just gonna get straight into it. There's gonna be timestamps in the description down below and also on the screen. If you're watching on mobile, you could actually scroll through the video to the settings that matter the most to you because I'm just cool like that. So leave a like if you like that feature and subscriber if you're brand new around here for more awesome content join turbo nation make it official man what are you doing you always watch my videos but you never subscribe i'm talking to you let's get it all right so we're gonna start off here with the controller settings my button layout is gonna be tactical flipped all this does is that it allows me to use my l1 and r1 on the top of my controller to aim down sight and fire my weapon now people ask me all the time how do i improve my aim accuracy and all that etc etc well if you're using the flipped buttons the response is so much quicker than having to use the triggers on the back so that's why it's a lot more instant and at the same time if you're trying to engage in enemies from long range so you're tapping tap firing tap firing it's going to result in a much more accurate shot versus if you use a trigger you could potentially spam it and then your gun's going to go all over the place and also with tactical flipped i use my circle button to melee which is something that i don't normally do but the r3 is going to be my crouch prone and slide so that is most important to me i like to slide cancel i like to move around like a quote-unquote pro and if you guys don't know how to do that yet go check out my video on how to do just that so that's why i use tactical flipped it's much more comfortable for me and i also use a scuff as well uh this is my scuff and i use only one paddle on the back because that's just what i'm comfortable with i feel like if i use another one on the other side i'm just gonna touch a button that i just didn't mean to touch and it's gonna mess me up in game so the back so my back button is for jumping so that's how i'm able to jump and shoot at the same time you can still do this without a scuff if you don't want to use tactical flipped you can always go ahead with stick and move flipped you'll get the same effect instead of sliding with r3 you're going to be jumping with r3 and you know so this is a little workaround that you can do and also you can go to your ps4 or xbox settings and just remap the buttons to your liking so that's just my little 10 cents right there uh stick layout is default invert look is disabled dead zone is going to be different for everybody because this is basically the stick drift that you get let's say you're in a war zone match you're looking at the map and you notice that your crosshair is just kind of moving around on its own and you're like hey i'm not even touching the controller so this is what you want to adjust usually you want to increase the dead zone so that it'll make your crosshair stop moving so once it stops moving then that's perfect you want to keep it at that dead zone so do not copy my dead zone it's going to be different for everybody my horizontal and vertical stick sensitivity has increased greatly i used to be around a seven sensitivity but now i'm rocking to 12 thanks to these control freak rings that you put on the bottom of your stick so let me see if i can give you a good angle here of what they look like on the stick so see that uh well, I get it to focus see that purple thing that purple thing is the control freak ring so what this does is that it adds more resistance to your stick allowing you to increase your sensitivity in game and you'll have much more precise movement with your aim and i highly highly recommend these control freak rings they do work if you're interested in trying them out go click the link down below in the description for control freak and of course use code turbo at checkout because i know you want to support me and i would really appreciate it so let's move it on here ads sensitivity multiplier is going to be 0.80 ADS sensitivity multiplier high zoom. So this is mostly for sniper rifles in the game. And I, you know, quite frankly, I'm not phase turbo here. So I don't really snipe. I'm not sniping is not really my thing. So I just leave it at a one. Doesn't matter to me. Aim response curve type. This is something that I've been experimenting with. And ever since I moved to dynamic, I felt like my shots are a lot more sticky, a lot more accurate and more consistent versus with the standard. So this is what I've been rocking with ever since season six started. So make sure to give this a try if you felt like your aim was off after the update because every update it just totally screws up the settings in the game for some reason so that's why it's very important to stay on top of your settings and make sure they're updated uh controller vibration no brainer that's going to be off i want to save my controller from dying and another reason too to have this off is that you know when you feel a controller rumbling it could distract you from the actual gunfight so you know i just like to be left alone i don't like those type of distractions when i'm in a gunfight i just like to focus on the task at hand all right aim assist is going to be standard 
and weapon mount activation is going to be double tap ads this is just a personal preference by the way weapon mount weapon mount movement exit disabled aim down sight behavior is hold equipment behavior is hold contextual tap for my reload behavior so uh, this one is exclusively for warzone all right so if you're playing multiplayer you might want to go with tap to reload however if you're playing multiplayer and you're using contextual tap you want to be sure to hold down on your square button that way you do not pick up a weapon unintentionally and you just reload your weapon because that's happened to me multiple times and it screwed me up so be careful of that but contextual tap has huge advantages to it you can just pick up items a lot faster you can close and open doors a lot faster just helps you move faster in general throughout your progression in the game uh, so uh, contextual tap is something that I do highly recommend uh, depleted ammo switch is enabled slide behavior is tap uh, auto move forward is disabled automatic sprint disabled vehicle camera recenter is enabled parachute auto deploy is enabled because sometimes I'm dumb and I just forget to deploy my parachute in warzone and I die uh, moving on to general setting so my brightness is going to be dead on at 50 because I am a content creator so I do want the most raw footage as possible because if I up that brightness a lot more then I'm going to have to do a lot more editing in the program but for you if you don't do YouTube or Twitch then maybe you might want to increase that so you can see your enemies a lot clearer because it is really hard to see enemies sometimes especially with different skins they do blend in with the area all right so uh, safe area this is something that not a lot of people talk about but this is very important and it could help you out so for the safe area I like to minimize this as much as I possibly can that's why you see all the gray space around the borders here uh, because you're looking at your mini map on the top left and you've got your ammo on the bottom right and you've got some other information on the bottom left hand corner as well as on the top right so you want to make sure everything is as small and compact as possible so that your eyes are not like traveling all over the screen and your head's not moving up left right down and all that while you're playing because what that can do is that it's a, basically a distraction because uh, you know when you're looking up you know to look at your media map like this uh, somebody could be looking right at you and kill you so that's why it's better to just have it as small as possible so your eyes don't have to travel around the screen as much so that's my little tip on the safe area and maybe something you should apply to all right so film grain is going to be all the way at zero uh, you know who wants to play with that film gram all the way up I mean you know no disrespect if you do like it but personally, I think it looks a lot clearer when the film game zero tooltips is going to be enabled for me. Uh, that's just a personal preference. Subtitles. I have those disabled. Another personal preference. English for language colorblind type. So this one is a huge one that I get all the time, even to this day, ever since I started using it in season one, literally the most common question, Turbo Man, what is your color settings? So here it is right here. Deuteranopia. This one just makes everything a lot more vibrant, a lot more colorful. You know, if you take a look at the other ones, maybe to you, Tritonopia might be the best one. You know, we all have different eyeballs and we all see things differently in the world. Uh, but for me personally, Deuteranopia was the one that I felt was most colorful for me. Um, so colorblind target, I'm going to be using both because, you know, if we just put it in the world, then only the world would be colored. Uh, interface is basically your heads up display and all that. Now, if you put it on both, this is probably the best scenario. I mean, it just looks a lot better and more appealing. World motion blur. I have that disabled. I mean, look at that on the right side. It looks absolutely terrible. This is something you do not want to do. Uh, maybe it's personal preference for you. I don't know. Uh, weapon motion blur. Same exact case here. As a content creator, I need to have the gun renders to be as clear as possible so uh you know it's good for thumbnails all right mini map so this is something that i'm very surprised that not a lot of people know about even till this day man we're in season six cold war is almost here but this is something that you need to try right now if you haven't yet move your mini map to square you have a lot more real estate and more areas to look at on your mini map uh, if you have this up, I mean, take a look at the examples here. You definitely do see more when your mini map is square. So that way, when a UAV is up, more enemies are exposed on your mini map and you have more awareness and more information. Um, mini map rotation, I have this enabled. So basically, when I'm turning left, the mini map moves with me as well. Take a look at the examples again. So, you know, if you don't really understand what I'm saying. So this is also very helpful. Uh, compass, cardinal direction text. I just have it on letters. You know, this is just a personal preference. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, content filters I have this disabled uh, dismemberment and gore effects I have that enabled because I think it's cool to see and I like it okay now for audio so I've been switching back and forth for audio uh, you guys may have different personal preferences you know it's kind of like with your site everybody hears things differently at different frequencies uh, but for me personally I have personally been using between home theater and uh, boost high 
So the whole purpose between these two settings for me personally is because I like to hear footsteps. We need to hear footsteps. The more footsteps you hear, the more aware you are of where your enemies are. So uh, try between boost high, boost low, and home theater. These are my three settings that I do recommend for audio mix. Because again, you know, we're all wearing different headsets. We're all having different hearings, different frequencies. So uh, use which one is best for you. Just go to a private match, you know, jump in with a friend, have him walk around somewhere, and then make your decision based on that. Master volume, I have it all the way up at 100. Music volume, I don't really care too much about it i just think it's a distraction in game like i said i need to hear footsteps and sound horror so that's why i have my music volume all the way at zero dialogue volume have that all the way up it is really nice to be able to hear the voice over audio because there are call outs in the game that are very important to give you more information so i have that all the way at 100 effects volume also is going to qualify for footsteps uh people reloading their weapons uh people using equipment you know etc etc so you want to have that at 100 any kind of information is going to give you a huge advantage in Modern Warfare. Uh, Juggernaut Music, I have that disabled, just a personal preference. Hit Marker, uh, going to be classic, just a personal preference. Voice Chat, I do have this enabled. You know, sometimes I do like to talk to people in game, uh, but, you know, this is just personal preference all over here. You know, it's not really that important. Oh, this is something new. War Tracks as a passenger. Uh, you can have this on every time you get into a vehicle in Warzone. Maybe you might want to have this on, but personally... I would recommend having it off because if you have the music on, you know, you can't really immerse yourself in the environment and really hear what's going on around you. You know, you might miss a call out or something like that. So, uh, but you know, if you don't care about that stuff and you want to rock so, to some really nice tunes, have it on. All right. And I think about that covers everything. If you guys did enjoy this video, found it helpful in any way, shape or form, drop a like on this video. And also if you're new around here, or you watch my videos all the time and you just haven't hit that subscribe button, man. What, what, literally, what are you doing right now? Subscribe, join Turbo Nation today. Make it official. Subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Peace out.